Good afternoon. I know this meeting was scheduled for four, but I have a doctor's appointment at 315 and wouldn't be able to keep it. So I figured I would just go ahead and do the demonstration and record it and send it to you and then expect to see everyone next Wednesday. And again, if you can't attend these OER minutes, um, I will record them and send them each week to you anyway. So um, this week I've decided to highlight four OER resources. Um, the first one is OpenStax. The second one will be OER Commons. The next one will be Oasis. And then Mason OER MetaFinder, um, also known by the acronym MOM. So we'll get started with OpenStax. And I will not, you know, show you everything within these websites, but just you know, knowing the name and knowing kind of what they provide will give you the opportunity to go back and see if you can find things specifically for your discipline. Um, so here's just kind of telling you that the website will move effective January 2022. So, um, so here it is, you can do a search if you're looking for a particular topic or a, diff a particular type of um, discipline specific textbook. Here on the opening page, you see algebra and trig American government, anatomy and physiology, biology. So you see a lot of the sciences, math. Um, and if you keep scrolling, you see college success. I know one of the instructors from Simmons of Kentucky, I know you teach um, something akin to college success. So here's like first year experience, student success, um, college transition courses. So if this is something you're interested in, you would just click. And if you're using a specific book already, you know, you can kind of compare the table of contents to see if this book works, because it may be something you can supplement your lessons with or um, maybe even switch to. But of course you want to kind of check it out yourself. Um, knowing yourself as a leader. And you can see how it kind of <laughs> pops up and gives students some information about highlights. Um, and so they can use this book the same way they would, uh, you know, they can make highlights, they can take notes. And so this is something that college OpenStax provides. So if I go back to, um, if I get back to the opening page, let me again here. Um, entrepreneurship, if that's an element you want to infuse in your college success, um, course, then you can look in this particular textbook to see if there's a particular chapter you want to assign students, um, you know, etc. So there's business, here's sociology, statistics, microbiology. Um, here's one, the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and it tells you in the abstract that this is a this is produced through a collaborative publishing agreement between OpenStax and the Bill of Rights Institute. Um, organizational behavior. And some of these, again, you may want to just click economics to see what the table of contents looks like. And if there may be a chapter, it goes to psychology, um, that appeals to you and or your students. And then there are also community created content, understanding basic music theory, for example. So this was created through um, community of individuals dedicated to open license educational content. So we know that this would be free to use for you and your students. And that may be an idea because sometimes when you go to a site like this, it also gives you an idea that do you have a community of individuals who could create a community created um, textbook. And that may be, you know, here they did something, um, a group got together to do um, something that looks into 
the growth of the contemporary Houston art scene. And they look at the decades of 1950s, 60s, and 70s. So this may be something that you know you want to do within your own discipline, within your department, maybe put together a book that the department can kind of agree on that these particular chapters or this information may be unique to your students. And um, once you create it, you can have it shared here. You can also do a search so that if you can't find anything on that opening landing page, just to be sure that they have it, um, they let you, um, they do provide an overview here. So they say in humanities, they have 217 books. Um, business, they have 98. And so you kind of see the breakdown. So if you're doing, you know, criminal um, justice, you know, try typing it in. And you may not find a book per se. Here they looked at criminal and then they looked at justice. And then you can see the authors, Institute of Humane Studies. Um, you kind of scroll through and see if there is something minority studies, a sociological text, US history, no, collection of ethics, business law. Then we kind of get back into, and then it kind of goes on. So if you have you know, time, you can kind of flip through all of this or not. Um, you can always do an advanced search. So here we can do humanities and then type in crim and then use the asterisk and it will look for any word that ends with that. So to look up criminal, criminology, um, are not. So let me um, yeah, so that's so it's not coming up per se, right? So that's okay. <laughs> if you don't see anything for your particular discipline, then you know you can't make something appear that's not here. But this is one open, this is one site that provides open um, content for instructors and students. And then you know you may be able to find something if you spend a little more time. I just let's see, I'm gonna try that again because I thought they may have had. Um, let's see if I type in social, if I can get my keyboard to learn social justice. It's kind of like a lot of other things have to kind of play with some keywords. So here you see beyond convention, beyond critique, uh, preparing educational leaders to promote equity and social justice. Do we need government that keeps popping up? Social justice from an esoteric view. And again, so you may not find an, a book that directly speaks to your discipline. Um, you may find a chapter within a book that does, um, but it does, you know, it does provide an option for, especially um, people in popular, you know, in the math, as you saw, there were countless math and science textbooks. Um, I was gonna try one more. Nursing. Hmm. Yeah. So it pulls the chapters from different places. Psychology. Hmm. You get to see books. Um, still not quite. I'm gonna try one more. So I'm trying to think about the people in your disciplines. So religion, um, learning about religion, a commentary on the re reality of religion, global sociology, uh, has something in there. Mm, the rest of this kind of sociology, but it did pull up learning about religion as one um, general introduction to religions and the study of religions. So there's that. And again, this is OpenStax. The next one is OER Commons. Um, and it has a lot to 
build from. And just like Merlot, many of these have places where you can go and build your collection, build your network and save and collaborate with other um, like-minded researchers. You can create your own OER, but again, you know, you're in Merlot, so it's kind of like you, you can do, put all of this even in there. So as long as you have one place that you are uh, comfortable doing that, that is probably your best bet so that you don't lose a lot of time moving from one platform to another. But just in case, you can always come to OER Commons and find um, collections, providers, resources. You can see different hubs. These are some of the featured hubs. Um, I'm not going to, I don't have an account, so I'm not going to log in. But if I click see all the hubs, you will see. Um, sorry, we have a lot going on. Um, if you click on see all the hubs, you see all um, other OER options. So here's the Iowa AE. AEA um, OER. Here's another one for the American International Accreditation Associations of Schools and Colleges. Here's the Alabama OER Commons, Arabic languages, um, other languages, um, other colleges, Caribbean, more rights more for more people. You have the Co California Community College Hub, um, cyber citizenship. So you can, of course, click and go into, um, here's OpenStax. This is another um, OER that we've already looked into. Here's Open Textbooks. Um, here are STEM resources, the Tennessee Open Education Hub, the one for the state of North Carolina, the United Nations, which is one I will actually show um, later in the month. And so this is the Hawaii OER project. So again, depending on your um, field or your discipline, you're often able to look into various OER resources to see if you see anything that relates. Like we the people, this is um, deals with our constitution, the history, tells you about the hub, tells you, you know, what you'll see, um, things you can find. So it breaks down the articles, um, the constitution as a living document, primary sources. So if you were in criminology or criminal justice class and you wanted to um, move through the judicial branch, here are some items that um, you can use. So here's like the Marbury Madison decision judgment and the Brown versus Board of Education. Uh, and so they get to see the primary documents that, you know, these are the documents, the original documents that have been digitized. And, you know, the only thing is just similar to what I remind students is just kind of remind just kind of look to see how you got here. So you can always kind of find your way back to where you are. And so if you create an account, what you're able to do in OER Commons is if this Article 3 Judicial Branch Collection is something you want to keep in your account, you could just click Add OER and it would add it to your um, saved items so that if you sign back in and register and all that, um, you would have it. These are also groups, some featured groups that are working on um, items. But if you're looking for something in particular, um, a resource or a collection, you just click on resources. And here you see it divided by subject areas. So you have applied science, arts and humanities, business and communication, career, um, where you could probably find stuff for college success, first year student experience, um, education, you get the idea. Law may be a good place to start for um, criminology, social sciences, uh, religion, of course, maybe should be covered perhaps in um, arts and humanities. 
And then they have material types. So if you're looking for games, homework assignments, interactive activities, lectures, lecture notes, you know, again, the purpose of OER is to make what you do less time consuming on the front end so that you can spend a lot more time with students and engagement and assessment so that you can kind of see where they are and then take them to the next level. Um, if you have to create everything from scratch, that usually just kind of bogs and weighs um, instruction down. So here are copies of syllabus, teaching strategies and learning strategies, and here are textbooks. Um, so if you're looking for a textbook, you can also, that would also come up in the results when you do a search. So there's different ways to um, search within OERs. You can, again, click on discover, click resources, and it'll bring you here, or you can click on collections. And so they talk about um, collections, what's new. And here are some of the collections. This one here has um, 1,200 resources within it. Um, teaching engineering has 1600. Um, if you're teaching English um, and you're doing Shakespeare, maybe the Folger Shakespeare Library is something that you would want to look into. Game-based learning. I know that is something our Q, the QEP is um, tasked with and I guess, you know, then and thus um, instructors, you know, like yourselves. Uh, so looking at, because some games, like creating the entire game, gamification for an assignment, excuse me, or a course can be, you know, time consuming and a daunting task. So you can come to here and click on game-based learning and then see some of them, you know, you want to make sure you do education level because um, you don't want to do lower primary, upper primary, middle school, high school. Um, so maybe the community college, college career, technical, adult ed, um, maybe where you want to, how you want to filter these. So if you, you know, you can filter and include those four. Um, so now you're looking at accounting, field hockey, like electric, you know, whatever that is. Um, Files for textbook affordability, challenge game, math tutorial, science, something about lunar. So you get the idea. And so you can click on one and you can see if it's something that you can use or if it's often when people submit here the rights statement. That's what these are. Um, and it just gives you the attribution. And usually if you hover over the eye, it'll tell you what that means. So this one. That it says that it's open to use, share, and change, even for commercial use, but you must provide, provide attribution to the original author. It just means that if you include this in your class, you need to cite it in your syllabus or say where you got this from and who created it when you use it in your lesson. Um, this one, if you hover, it says prohibits commercial use. You can open, share, and change it. So long as that's what it says, that means you can open it. And if you need to tweak it for your particular discipline or your particular um, goal or purpose or outcome objectives, you can. And then you can always just click the hourglass and type using the terms. And I guess I'm... And so here, finally, right, we get criminal justice as the subject. So I can just click there. And it did uh, remove some of the results because before it was said 178. But if I just use criminal justice, I get um, American Civil Liberties Union, Blood Splatter Lab. Um, this is an activity in a lab. Uh, Criminal Justice 100, so it sounds like, so this is a textbook. Um, so here you can tell this is a module. So if you're doing case briefs, are you need cases? Are you need case studies? Here are some criminal justice and domestic violence. Um, census data on local law enforcement agencies. This is a data set. So in here, you can kind of see that you have a lot of options, the types of material. Um, are pretty vast. I mean, it's not like you just come here for lessons or you just come here for a lesson plan 
um, are reading. You can get simulations, you can get a student guide, textbooks, unit of study, um, diagram, illustration, and data sets, all from this one um, OER. And that is OER Commons. And so the next one is OASIS. And here, this is an advanced search. Let's go back to, because when I copied it, I copied the wrong link. So this is the home page for it. And here you can search if you, you can search for textbooks, courses, course materials, interactive simulations, public domain books, audiobooks, modules, open access books, videos, podcasts, learning objectives, primary sources. So again, um, this is just another kind of um, um, like OER Commons, OER Commons is very similar to Merlot, where there are a lot of um, sources housed in Merlot. So Merlot is that um, container. So Oasis is also a container, just like OER Commons is a container where you can find all of these, infra these different sources open, um, available for you to use. Here they have 114 sources, 440,000 records, and there are 513 institutions that link to OASIS. <laughs> so much going on. So here, if we click on OER by subject, you see they cover a wide range, everything from women's studies to public speaking, philosophy, math, literature, health and nutrition, economics, college success, <laughs> composition, fine arts, information literacy. Um, so if you're doing things in technology, um, you can do technology, technical writing, information literacy. Um, and you can find infographics, you know, all of that is possible if you search by subject. So if we're looking um, let's see, humanities. So we see philosophy. So if we come here, we see there are 585 results. If we don't, you know, if you want to just kind of peruse, you can see that there are 370 open access books. If you're just looking for textbooks related to the humanities, So here you get to see it, um, the titles and work your way through. Click reset. Takes me back to the original. So there are five podcasts. There are public domain books. There's primary sources. There's a video. There's course material. Um, and a course, 11 courses. So if you click that, um, these are courses provided and it tells you the source. So they pull from OpenStax as well. So sometimes you'll see these things are duplicate, um, but some people may put something here that is not there. So it's just one of those things where if you don't find success in one place, you look at Merlot and you find something, but then maybe you don't find exactly what you're looking for. You can still come to these and then add the link to your Merlot account so that you have everything in that one location. Because again, you don't want to set up four or five different accounts. Um, I think I feature somewhere between three to four OER uh, resources each week. So you wouldn't want to set up accounts for what, about 40, 50 um, OER you know, websites. So if you maintain your Merlot account, you can link all of those um, items there. Mm -hmm. So here is um, religion and law, African American studies, digital humanities, which is like really catching on, intro to humanities. Um, so if I come, if I go back to OER by subject, I can then type in religion and hit the magnifying glass. 
And here I get 1100 results. So here's a course, it's an MIT open course. And so this, this means that it's a full course, like students who come to your class for 16 weeks, this is that full course um, that you can pull from MIT. And this is medicine, religion and politics in Africa and the African diaspora. And of course, such a course um, would free you from having one to create all of that content yourself, but you can always look at their content. And if you don't like what you see, you can take that part out, add your own, and supplement and build your course um, using information that you didn't have to necessarily be the one to go out and find. Um, so here is a course on anthropology, but it focuses on religion and social order. Here's another science and religion too, world religions introduction to philosophy, the philosophy of religion. So again, if you just go to OER by subject, type in what you're looking you know, the, the discipline, um, the topic that you're looking for, you know, you get their filters look different. Um, just like I remind students that all databases have pretty much the same information, it's just presented differently. But they will always have a way for you to filter the information. And then the last one, and I know I may be moving quickly, but you get the recording. Um, I kept, and I'm taping, I'm recording it so that you can see the names of, um, except for this one, I don't know why I didn't show, but that you see the names of the resources so that you can go and play with them. And I will also um, share the full list um, in the email that I'm sending the recording with. So you'll have links there. So this is, um, a lot, many of these new containers are being um, archived or maintained by universities because, of course, it's not just, you know, if you get it online, you're not, why would you just keep it in house for your faculty? So you're, they're finding that, you know, they can just open it up and let um, people, whenever, find information. So this one is real time federated search for OER content across 21 resources. And it gives you information about the MetaFinder because this is a little different maybe from what some of the other ones we've looked at. So it helps you find them, but unlike others, and they named the ones <laughs> Merlot, um, you aren't searching a static database that we've built. Instead, it launches a real-time simultaneous search across 23 different sources of open educational materials. So that means that it's not only searching OER Commons and OASIS that we just looked at and Merlot that we've already looked at in OpenStax. It is also looking at DPLA, which is another one that we'll look at individually. Hathi Trust, we'll look at individually. The Internet Archive, the, um, the Wayback Machine, we'll look at that. Um, individually, I think I have that. Um, the New York Public Library Digital Collections, many um, public state um, repositories um, have made much of their digital collections open and free to the public. And I don't mean to keep looking away, I have a class <laughs> that I also have to teach in a few minutes. Um, it's a busy day, I, don't, I chose Wednesdays because when I looked at the calendar, it didn't seem that full, but of course I was not looking right. So here are the other places that they search when you type in search. They're looking at MIT, Open Courseware, um, Open Michigan, which is another kind of container repository, OER. They're looking at the Open Research Library, the Open Textbook Library, Project Gutenberg. Some of these we explore separately, but just um, to know that Mason Mom, Mason OER MetaFinder um, searches across all of those. So here is a list of them again. And if you only want to search one as opposed to all, you just click and unclick. Um, so you're looking for, you can search the full record. You can search if you have a title, an author, keywords. You can search by dates. So if we type in, So if we type in counseling, you can see if we get any results. And here it says, these are the 21 top results from 21 found. Um, here are instructional videos provided by Udemy. Um, 
Here's some OERs from the Internet Archives. This one is from Stanford University Interdisciplinary Collaborations um, U Channel. So over here, document type, archival sources, OERs. Uh, you can do it by, let's see, visual. So university level materials. If you, it says two. So if we click those, there's Chinese University Lectures, and it gives you a summary. Uh, so it features 187 courses from 14 universities in China, um, though a few include English. So you may not want to do that if your students don't know Mandarin. So that's why it's really important to do, you know, read the um, abstracts and such before you waste a whole lot of time like clicking and going. So here's a single course, um, a series of lectures. So we're going to click it because we typed in the word counseling to see what that looks like. Um, and here you see a number of titles of hmm, strange biological secrets. Hmm, interesting. Of a successful pathogen. Hmm, that sounds more like but you get the idea. So I don't want to, um, hmm. let's see, use quotation marks and do mental health. So typing in mental health, 600, so there's 290 and growing um, items, 290,000. Um, and so here you can search by filter by topic. Um, this is a digital put. So this is something from a radio station. There are 147 additional results. Okay. <laughs> um, so here, yeah, keywords supported by a grant. This is a project looks like a document. Um, here is something from the Office of Policy Development. But again, you can use your filters here if you wanted all full text. If you wanted a book, you could just click and you'll just get all the books and that'll filter away everything else. So here's a book on student mental health, mental health care and financing, um, directories, mental health and suicide, mental health in prisons, issues, et cetera. Um, this is an open book from JSTOR. So again, it pulls from a number of different types of sources. Um, and so it is pretty comprehensive, but you can kind of see just with the search and how they are, the results are returned that it could take you some time. And that is okay as well. <laughs> um, again, I would be doing these every Wednesday, Next Wednesday should be live um, so that you can be there and ask questions as we go through and you can remind me of all the different disciplines we have if I need to look for something specific. But I think these are four good places to start if you're still looking for open um, education resources, which I think as you continue to just teach and meet your students, you find there's always something you can add to a course. And sometimes it becomes really overwhelming um, and you have to then decide if you're gonna throw something out or are you gonna add something or where would you add it? Um, because you can pretty much um, find an entire course, including lectures, um, videotape, video recorded lectures for a course and you not necessarily be that engaged in your own course and that may be too much for some instructors so again thank you uh, sorry we weren't able to do this live but you have the recording i look forward to seeing you next week